Morning all, time for another video. Just had my hair cut. Yes, I lost some strength, a bit like Samson, but actually I look more like Tom Cruise. And in fact, he thinks exactly the same. However, let's go straight into it. Today video is a follow on from the last one I did, which was Fairburn and Sykes, the fighting knife. Um, so I've been asked some questions, I've had some comments, and today I'm going to talk through this one while I'm on the subject. RAF Pilot Rescue Knife. It does have other names. Okay, we'll come on to that in a minute. There it is. Why am I going to talk about it today? Because it relates to the SAS and what we did all those years ago on the counter-terrorism team. Anybody with the black kit on would almost everybody would carry one of these okay for obvious reasons which we'll talk about quite interesting um as people have asked the question i'm here to answer it for you before that if you want anything books prints just go to my website www.rusty-firmin.org forward slash shop there's one of the books on there, Go, 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 Definitive Story of the Iranian Embassy Siege, okay, which was turned into a film out on Netflix called Six Days, of which Jamie Bell, the British-born actor, plays Rusty Fermin. He plays a good part, far better than I could at tap dancing, but never mind. The second book that's on there, The Regiment, 15 Years in the SAS, My Life Story, up until I left the regiment in 1992. Okay, working on the third book that follows this one as we speak. That also is on my website. Both of those are on Audible as well. So you've got a choice. Behind me, the famous picture with Rusty with no gloves on in the center. Okay as we entered the rear of the building on May the 5th, 1980, to rescue the hostages. Done really well. It's called The Resolution on my website. And the other one to the right of me, above me, that's called The Surrender, June the 14th, 1982, with me in front of the Pakara aircraft on Stanley Airfield, Falkland Islands. All on there for sale, all get signed from home, posted off to you. Too late for Christmas, unfortunately. But the guys who've got them, I hope you get them all in time. There's been quite a few. And anybody wants one, I'll get them out to you just as soon as I can. I sign and send from home. I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to tell you about Expat Radio. For those who don't know, 110 countries, thereabouts. I've been given my own program on that for an hour long. My first interview was with Jim Davison last Friday, the 18th. That will be replayed and I'll put it out. We didn't have time to really advertise it last time, but um, it was an hour show with me and Jim on there. And of course, Dave Hellwood, the producer, who runs um, expat radio station and the guy who having interviewed me offered me my own program so i said thanks jim came on we had a bit of a laugh and it's at the moment it's every two weeks um i'll let you know who the next guest is just as soon as i find out what date with the christmas in between and the new year and then i let people know properly so once it's out we'll let you know okay and that is expat media radio and with a lot of listeners as i say in 110 countries so another string to the bow i suppose and i will be getting some good guests i hope and really it's fun time um, I should be slowing down, but I'm not. So I'm sorry about that, guys. Anyway, let's have a look at the RAF pilot rescue knife. 
Okay, here it is. Quite simple, doesn't look much to it. That's how we would have had it, but it would have had a green sheath that this goes into, then then would be stitched on to either your um, coveralls, maybe, or what we call the ops waistcoat. Some people refer to that as the ops vest. I call it a waistcoat. Who's going to argue? There is no argument. So that is the knife I'm going to be talking about. And as I said, the reason is that it played a part with our team in the Iranian embassy siege. Okay, we've talked about weapons this and weapons that, fighting knives. This little thing here did some good. Um, and we'll come on to that one in a second. So let's just have a look. Manufactured by Joseph Rogers, Sheffield. Um, a big name, Sheffield Steel. So the metal scabbard, if you like, with the number on the back. You can't see the number. But then you get the knife itself, about 20 centimeters long. 10 centimeters on the blade and probably about 10 centimeters on the handle. If you look at the handle, it's rough, it's got pimples on it. That's for grip, okay, to help with the grip. That would be the way you hold it, so your finger doesn't slide from the guard onto the sharp bit. And that bit at the back would be where your thumb would go. Don't worry about this at the moment. You'd have a lanyard attached to that. How long is a piece of string? Have a guess. And we'll talk about that in a second. So you can see the numbers. This is an original. Okay, made in Sheffield. That's the number it should have on there. Okay, so this is another one of mine. So we've talked about the distance, uh, sorry, the length and stuff of it. And people, if you read <laughs> Wikipedia or something like that, it says that they were stitched onto the guy's coveralls at the Rain Embassy Siege. One or two were. But don't forget, when you look at the weapon, a knife, it's not a fighting knife, albeit you wouldn't want it stuck in you, okay? It's primary, you know, for, for a, a pilot rescue knife would be for something like cutting rigging lines on a parachute, maybe, if you got stuck. At the siege, it was, became useful when you see the trooper that was hung up in the flames getting third degree burns when they finally cut him down. Okay, this was the knife that was used. You can imagine somebody of that weight, the rope would be taut, easy to cut through. Not so easy to cut through if you just had a, um, a piece of rope and you were trying to cut it, but with the weight of somebody on that, cut through it, down you go. That's what it was designed to do, and it worked. So there's nothing fancy about it. And as I say, it is not designed as a fighting knife. However, it would be in its scabbard. Before I put it away, it's interesting how it goes into the scabbard. There's a little, um, uh, at the end, a little uh, point at the end there. I can't remember what you call it exactly. And there's a hole there in the knife. That slides into there. Okay. And then... You click those two in, which are spring-loaded. It clicks on. That will not come out. And that's obvious because when these knives were stitched on, they were always upside down. Why? I'll come on to that second. For obvious reasons. You wouldn't want a knife that way up, would you? On there or on there. You know, you're trying to get it out. You've got a weapon. Why not do the easy thing? Have it stitched up. You want the one it out and use it however the only thing i'll say is you have to push those two spring-loaded clips in it pops out anyway you've got the knife in your hand and you can do what you want don't worry about the weapons we're talking about because they're always or should be on a sling on your body 
Remember the slings I showed you, multi-purpose? Okay, it'd be on your back, it could be by your side, the weapon could be anywhere, which means you've got your side weapon, which would be a uh, nine milli, which means you're free to use this and be quite safe. Your weapons aren't going anywhere unless you're gonna shoot them. Obviously you drop these, and fire your weapon. So, but it is that simple. And that's why we use them. So let me just put it back inside. Okay, spring load, clip, that's it. Keep it moist, guys. I mean, I didn't have any oil at home. But I did have some fairy liquid. And if you put it in there, let's be honest, for a few minutes for this um, for this video, it's all you need. Simple. Fairy liquid. Always remember that. I never used it when I was operational, but actually... It worked. It's made sure that my demo with my knife works. Remember? Seven Ps. Prior planning and preparation prevent piss poor performance. Job done. So, how did we fit them? Well, they weren't always stitched onto an arm. However, there were a few guys who preferred it on there. And let's be honest, if you're right-handed, would you put it on your right arm? <clears throat> no. So you've got the preference of where you want it. If you're right-handed, you probably have it on your left arm or your office waistcoat. Okay, stitch in there. So you've got, you know, you've got movement. If you're left-handed or cack-handed, as they call it, in my opinion, okay, it'd be stitched on the other side, wouldn't it? For ease, use it. Okay, or maybe on there. <clears throat> because everything we do is keep it simple, stupid. KISS. K-I-S-S. -S. Don't complicate anything. Okay? It's not worth it. And if you're left-handed, you wouldn't want it on there, would you? I'm trying to get it out. Okay? Nobody told me that, sir. Well, I've just told you that now. So, that side, that side, that side, or that side. But always upside down. Always. That knife is never going to fall out, ever, unless you use a bit of force to get it out when you want it. So, it really worked and we had no problem with it. That is a Mark III, the one I've just showed you. For those who are really interested with the, um, the, the blade that shape, the Mark II was more like a straight knife. I don't have one of them, never used it. But these were worth the weight in gold. We've talked about where they, um, where they were worn, but let's just talk about how it actually worked on the siege everybody that's interested okay it didn't happen where we were on ground floor but the abseilers that came down from the roof on the day 5th of may to the second floor balcony prior to entering had some problems didn't stop them in the end it probably uh, lost a little bit of initiative and maybe a little bit of momentum um, because the team around him could see the problem, obviously. Rope, fire, burning curtains coming out the way. Yeah, there's a bit of a recipe there for disaster somewhere. So one guy in particular got caught on the rope. It looked like the rope was caught around his carabiner. For those who do abseiling and stuff, I know exactly what I mean. Uh, but I'm not talking about carabiners at the moment. Uh, sorry, not um, ascenders, sorry, uh, descenders. Um, so somehow his rope was caught and he wasn't going anywhere but lucky enough he was at the right height for the guys to help steady it cut him down cut the rope above him obviously drop down dust yourself over carry on um, with the momentum again get the momentum back and carry on with the mission to rescue the hostages this is a very knife 
same type of knife that was used and you'd never know when you're going to need it however as i say everybody did carry it and it worked so that's just a brief one for today um and it fits in as i say behind the fairburn and sykes knife but you'll see just how easy it is to carry one of these okay the RAF pilot rescue knife if he gets trapped somewhere he's got a knife that works and you'll see that really it's only got the inside of the blade that is sharp the outside of the blade isn't okay you can see the difference and the two guards I'll mention once more is the finger guard at the front so your finger doesn't slip it can't okay and end up in front there you don't want that so you've got your finger guard there behind is a thumb guard okay and you go through the cutting motion we'll just mention that bit because somebody will say what's the ring for okay that would have uh, maybe paracord or some form of cord that if you needed to drop it to somebody okay it would be on the, the end of a string so you'd have that we didn't have it in that length we'd never probably need that but anybody that was stuck in trees rigging lines whatever might need the um, capability to drop it down maybe to somebody that's caught so they can cut themselves out you know um, so it's flexible and that's really the only reason that ring is on there okay for the cord to tie it onto and then just drop it down so for interest that's it i'll be moving on to the other stories shortly as we come towards christmas cover the two knives covered a lot of weapons and now i'm hoping to get back to some good stories again <clears throat> um over the next certainly the few days and i'm hoping to get one more out before christmas even on christmas day or boxing day so whether i have a santa hat on or not i don't know but to everybody i would like to say thanks for watching um we're just about on 15,000 subscribers now on this channel which is unbelievable it was a couple off the other day yesterday i haven't looked today i'll be honest I've been busy but it's right on there on 15 just get it up to some like-minded people and we'll keep going um, with the videos and to everybody Merry Christmas um, don't eat too much stay safe and have a wonderful new year let's see let's see what happens in the next few weeks okay I think well, I won't say anything at the moment but actually I just hope everybody stays safe if you're like me, you'll probably have a few glasses of whiskey somewhere, or port, or a few beers, and that'll be it. But let's see. So thanks for that. Keep your comments coming in. I am looking, and I am changing as I see them, um, when I can fit things in quickly like this, um, and then I'll be doing the other ones properly, slightly longer probably. I'm not aiming for 20-minute videos, thereabouts sometimes longer sometimes shorter but to everybody remember who dares wins bye for now